everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to another edition of Enlightened by Intuitive Eating. So in our last video, we talked about principle number one, reject the diet mentality. So if you haven't watched that one yet, definitely check it out and then come back to see us here. Today's video has been reviewed and edited by my colleague, Alyssa Ramsey, who is an amazing intuitive eating dietitian. So if you are looking for somebody to work with one-on-one, -on -one, I'm gonna leave a lot of information about Alyssa, her website and her Instagram, definitely hit her up. She's amazing. Hey guys. Switzerland here. Um, I of course want to just jump in here and flag that this content may not be for all of my subscribers um, and that is totally okay. I want to spread the intuitive eating message because I think it's so amazing um, but I am in no way prescribing this way of eating or thinking at all. So um, I just want to talk about you know what the research suggests works and and what I've seen work really well for people in practice including for myself and if it works for you amazing stick around we've got a full kind of all of the different principles to cover. And if it doesn't, then I promise you there's a lot of other great content here on Abby's Kitchen that hopefully is a little bit better suited to you and your goals. Now in this video, we're gonna be tackling principle number two, honor your hunger. And before we do, I wanna tackle a question from one of my viewers that I'm, I'm answering a viewer question every single week. So if you have a question, definitely leave me a comment below before you forget your question and I'll hopefully get to it in a future video. Dear Abby, intuitive eating seems to work under the assumption that a person is binging as a result of restriction. What about for those of us who chronically overeat and never restrict? This is such a great question. Now, while it is true that one of the best predictors of overeating or binging is restriction, sometimes the experience is a little bit more nuanced, which is I think where the disconnect lies. Even if you're eating whatever you want consistently, there's often a restrictive mentality that is the under threat of your relationship with food. So for example, you might often think things like, oh, I shouldn't have that rice with those beans. It's got too much carbs. I've already had one cupcake, so I might as well eat the whole bunch. Or, oh well, I already blew my healthy eating day. I might as well eat an entire pizza and start again tomorrow. So even if you're not physically starving yourself and physically restricting yourself, the psychological sense of scarcity can often have the same biological response as actual physical restriction. What ends up happening is our body goes into a natural survival mode. So your appetite increases, your preference for carb-rich food increases, and your body basically fights to prevent starvation at any cost, even if you're not physically starving. My colleague Alyssa describes this beautifully on her blog, which I will link below, and she talks about the importance of moving from a place of scarcity to a place of abundance. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through this series for sure. Another common reason for overeating is distraction or mindless eating. So a lot of us like to keep our mouths busy while maybe we're watching TV or we're watching a movie, often either out of habit or sometimes out of boredom. So if we're distracted by the TV or the computer while we have a big bowl of food in our lap, we may not really notice how much we're eating until we're at the bottom of the bowl. And it's often the case that, you know, we're just so distracted and into the bachelor rose ceremony that we just cannot hear our body's subtle signs and signals that it's had enough. We will definitely be touching more on this particular type of mindfulness as we move through the course. Another potential reason why people might be overeating is because they're consuming foods that are just not physically or emotionally satisfying. Diet foods are notorious for this. A lot of diet foods are really low in calories and ultimately are just not that enjoyable or pleasurable or satisfying. So we may eat a lot of them and still feel like we need to eat more food to fill the void. Sometimes this can be the difference between fullness and satisfaction. My colleague Rachel Hartley put this beautifully and I'll link to her below because she's amazing. She said that fullness is the physical sensation of satiety where satisfaction is the mental sensation of satiety. Both here are really important. So if you're finding that you're overeating a lot of these health foods, what you can do is try to beef up your meal with some fiber, protein, or fat in there for the fullness factor, and then something you love for satisfaction. So as an example, if I were to have like a green smoothie bowl, which is like kind of bleh, um, I would need to add a little bit of maybe some nut butter or some seeds on top for the fullness factor, and then maybe some chocolate for the satisfaction factor. Now I like really want a green smoothie bowl. There may also be an over-reliance on food to fill a lot of emotional needs and gaps. And that's something we're gonna be talking about in this episode. And ultimately, yeah, sometimes that is totally normal and healthy to do because let's be real, it is normal 
normal and natural to, to celebrate a birthday with cake, even if you're not physically really hungry for cake. But when we don't have any coping mechanisms other than food, this is really when we need to seek out some counseling and some help and some support to help us get to the root of the issues. Okay, so I just wanna jump in here and add one more piece to the puzzle, and that is talking about the foodscape that we live in. So a lot of people talk about an obesogenic food environment that really encompasses this idea that we have a lot of higher calorie, highly processed, highly palatable foods that not only are lower in cost often than let's say fruits and vegetables, but also are just readily available basically everywhere we look. So I think that that also may potentially play a role as well. If none of these apply to you and you still feel like you cannot stop eating, then you definitely want to speak to your healthcare provider who may be able to run some tests to be able to figure out if there's something else going on. Conditions like hypothyroidism, insulin related conditions like PCOS or uncontrolled diabetes, Graves disease, anxiety or depression, or gastric emptying can all increase feelings of uncontrolled hunger. So always, always, always speak to your healthcare provider to rule these things out. Now on that note, let's get to the meat and potatoes of principle number two, honor your hunger. Hunger is a deep seated natural biological phenomenon that is designed to help make sure that humans stay fueled, nourished, alive, and ultimately to maintain their natural set point. I have talked a lot more about set points. So you can watch that in this video right here. So when we actually listen to our body's hunger and fullness cues. We tend to eat in ways that actually satisfy our body's true biological needs. In fact, studies done on intuitive eating have found that people tend to actually balance out their food intake naturally when they're not exerting external pressures. However, when we ignore our body's innate wisdom and instead follow a set of rules like a diet to help manipulate our weight, our body will put in place all of these mechanisms to forcefully get us back on track. Here's the thing. Our body cannot tell the difference between a diet and a famine. In a panic, our hunger hormones ramp up, our fullness hormones kind of quiet, and we obsess over food in an effort to make sure that we hear those messages loud and clear. So while your favorite wellness or fitness blogger may claim that this is a lack of willpower issue, it's actually a biological drive that is deeply embedded in our DNA. But what happens if you don't feel hunger, or you don't feel hunger until you're literally starving. Let's talk about some of the reasons why we may feel disconnected from our body. Number one, numbing. So instead of eating whole meals, a lot of dieters will try to trick their body into thinking it's full by like filling it up with a lot of low calorie beverages like coffee, tea, at least a lot of these like cleanses, celery juice, diet pop, etc. But all this really does is kind of temporarily stretches the gut. And so it feels like there's something in your belly, but very quickly, you know, you're going to pee that out and you're stuck feeling starving again soon after. And also on top of that, feeling distrustful in your relationship with food. Number two, dieting. Dieters become very good at tuning hunger out. If you tune out hunger for long enough, then basically those signals just stop coming and your body learns to operate on fewer and fewer calories. Number three, stress. So when we're stressed, our body goes into fight or flight mode. So basically all of our hunger cues are diverted to allow our body to get ready for the fight. This is one of the big reasons why people who go through major stresses in their life tend to lose a lot of weight unintentionally. Number four, skipping breakfast. So a lot of dieters will skip breakfast because it stops the hunger wave from getting started. We need to shift the focus away from believing that hunger is a bad thing and instead recognizing it as a truly essential biological drive. And that is also a really good sign that your metabolism is actually working. And number five, drugs. Of course, things like alcohol, drugs, smoking cigarettes, all of these can quiet that hunger cue. So if you are thinking about starting on your intuitive eating journey, this may be a good time to kind of put those vices on the back burner. If any of these experiences ring true to you, you may be wondering how the heck am I ever going to honor my hunger? Well, let's get to it.
If you've been dieting your whole life, it is very normal for you not to really feel a whole lot of hunger. So if that sounds like you, a really good rule of thumb is to start by having three meals plus snacks every single day and making sure that you're eating regularly and consistently throughout the day. I also want to acknowledge that yes, I am telling you that you may need to eat even if you're not physically feeling hungry. Know that this is just a temporary step, especially for those of us who, you know, have been dieting for so long that we no longer can actually hear those hunger cues. But we need to train the body to know that it can trust us. And the only way to do that is to eat. Now, once you start eating regularly again, you'll start to feel those hunger cues kick in. It's time to get acquainted with your hunger. And to do that, I usually like to use the hunger and fullness scale. So number one on the scale is that you are starving. You absolutely need to eat like a sap. And number 10 would be you're so full that you pretty much feel sick. Most people don't feel so great operating on the fringes, but you wanna check in with your hunger about one to two hours after you eat. Go somewhere quiet, somewhere where you are undisturbed, put your hand on your belly and breathe in, breathe out, and just listen, check in. If you are not yet hungry, then I want you to check in again about 30 to 60 minutes later to see if you're starting to feel some of those early hunger sensations. Now, I want you to start to take note of exactly how you feel at the beginning of your meal, somewhere in the middle of your meal, and at the end of your meal. So here are some words that you can use to describe your level of hunger. Either nothingness, pain, aching, tired or fatigued, Maybe you have a headache, a burning sensation, heart palpitations, growling stomach, difficulty concentrating, lightheadedness, you're irritable, etc. Now, I will discuss this in more detail when I get into the fullness episode, um, but I will say if you are going through this exercise and you feel like you just wanna keep eating even though you feel actually physically content or full, then you absolutely can. I just want you to notice it and notice how it makes you feel and then move on. Intuitive eating is not a set of hard and fast rules. Sometimes you're gonna to eat to a 10 because something tastes really, really good. And sometimes you're going to let yourself get super hungry and then eat super, super fast. And that is also 100% okay. You didn't fail, but if you're truly listening, it'll probably mean that your body will need a little bit more time before it needs to eat again. So in my video on intuitive eating during my holiday, I talked about how sometimes I would eat to like a full on 10 because something tastes really, really good. Or sometimes I would be distracted and busy and I wouldn't hear my hunger cues until they were screaming at me and therefore I would eat an, an, a larger meal. But I didn't punish myself for not honoring my hunger right. I simply noticed it, I moved on, and let my body guide the way for the rest of the day. So really what you're doing is simply banking information about how certain foods or certain amounts of foods make you feel and letting that information inform the rest of your day, week, month, etc. Once you've been doing this for a little while, start to take note of the trends. Are you eating to complete sickness all the time? Are you hungry all the time? How many general hours before eating do you get hungry again? Do certain foods make you more hungry quicker than others, etc. So for example, some of you may like more frequent smaller snacks or meals, while other people may like larger meals further apart. Every body is different, everyone's needs are different, so don't go comparing yourself to other people's diets. Finally, I wanna talk about different types of hunger. We tend to always think about just physical hunger, but there's actually quite a lot of different reasons for eating, all of which are valid. First is taste and mouth hunger. So like I mentioned in the question portion of this episode, sometimes we wanna eat something because something kind of tastes good or we're craving a specific flavor or mouth feel, or maybe we're kind of bored and it's a bit of out of habit, or maybe you're on vacation and you really wanna try the food that that city is known for and famous for. You technically may not be physically hungry, but these may be common reasons to eat anyways. Two is emotional hunger. So this is a really common reason for eating. And, and once you start to tune into your stomach hunger, you'll probably start to recognize emotional hunger a lot louder. So emotional hunger is based off of either positive or negative emotions. So it may be eating in response to sadness or disappointment, or on the flip side, eating in celebration. While it's totally okay to eat during these times, it's also important to know that food will not solve your problems. And ultimately, we need to find other coping mechanisms that may be more helpful instead. 
The third is practical hunger. So sometimes you just have to be a little bit practical when it comes to planning for your meals. And this also can fit within the context of intuitive eating. And I've gotten lots of questions about this. How do you plan? How do you meal prep and also be intuitive? So sometimes we know that, you know, maybe I'm not hungry at this minute, but I'm not gonna be able to eat again for another few hours. And by then I'll probably be hungry. So you're going to have a small snack or a small meal in order to tide you over so you're not starving and ravenous by the time you can get to your next meal. You are still honoring your hunger, even if it is your future hunger. And then finally is stomach hunger. Now, this is that biological drive to eat because we need those calories. We need that fuel. So your stomach is growling. You know, maybe you're feeling a little bit lightheaded. You're tired, you're sluggish. When it's loud, I get it's pretty obvious. However, for some of you, especially those who have kind of dulled those signs through dieting, um, it can take a little bit of practice to be able to pick up on those subtle cues. Before eating, I want you to take a moment to try to get to the root of what kind of hunger you're experiencing and why are you wanting to eat? It's not wrong to eat out of practical hunger, emotional hunger, or taste hunger. I want you to be wary of turning intuitive eating into you know, the hunger fullness diet, which will just pull us back into that all or nothing mentality, which is so prevalent in diet culture. But the most important thing to remember as you move forward on this journey, no matter what happens, is to not punish or shame yourself. Simply acknowledge it, and move on. Your homework for this week is to use the hunger fullness scale at every meal and snack. I want you to take note of where you are on the scale at the beginning of your meal. I want you to pause partway through your meal, maybe once or even twice. And then of course, also check in at the end of your meal as well. I want you to take notes as you go, being curious without judgment. So for example, were there times where you didn't feel hunger until you started eating and then you realized, hey, actually, you know, I was actually hungry. Are there times where you feel some hunger, but you don't eat? If so, how come? This is all just data. So take it in and look at it objectively like a scientist without the moral lens. And remember, if you're not feeling any subtle hunger cues, then before you get started on this exercise, I want to take it back and I want you to start to make sure that you're eating those three meals plus snacks consistently and regularly throughout the day to help kickstart those hunger cues again. Remember that intuitive eating ultimately takes a lot of time to embrace and to learn. And it's all about learning and respecting your body's innate cues. Thank you again to my colleague, registered dietitian, Alyssa Rumsey for reviewing this episode. I highly recommend if you're looking for a registered dietitian to check out her website in the description below and continue to work on these steps throughout your intuitive eating journey. I'm gonna be following this up with principle number three, make peace with food. Until then, I would love to hear some feedback from you guys. So subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment below with any questions that you have. Don't forget, I'm always gonna be answering one reader question every single episode. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.